Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. Uh, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. So we are in the middle of working on our K Koala design here. Uh, I think it's turning out so cute. We played around uh, a little bit with combining different strands of uh, thread together instead of just using one color. And uh, we played with different fills for the eucalyptus uh, branch. And uh, tonight we're gonna finish the faces, I think, for these guys and uh, maybe get going on the letters as well. So let's get going. Okay, everyone, let me scoot you on in here. All right, so here is the uh, uh, koala so far. So what we did yesterday was, uh, well, we did actually, we did the whole entire uh, baby koala and he is, um, he's got purple and blue. Uh, this guy's got purple and blue as well, but just a different color, uh, purple and blue. And then we went a little nuts on the stem here. For some reason, I, just, I, I wasn't feeling working on the face yet. I wanted to work on um, the stem. And we outlined it first. Uh, we had uh, three different strands of um, thread, three different colors. And uh, we outlined it, but then I'm like, oh, let's fill it in. It, it would look fun filled in. <laughs> so we did that. We just did more back stitches uh, to fill it in. And then we did the fishbone stitch for the leaves, again, using uh, a combination of colors of threads. And I think that just turned out so cute. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping the faces uh, work well like that tonight as well. I'm kind of wanting to do that same technique for, for the letters. I think that'd be kind of fun. But let's work on the faces. So let's see. Originally, the colors are like this light gray and then uh, um, uh, black for the, the face. So I think I kind of want to do something similar. But I think uh, I want to start with the noses. Um, let's do like a bunch of different grays. And I don't know if I have any of that in my scrap. Ooh, we do have gray in the scraps. Well, that's promising. I'm trying to use up the scraps first. So we could do a thing where we did like, well, I only have three strands of this left. So I was thinking we could do two strands of this. Maybe we do two strands of this and one other color for the um, mom koala and then we use like the one strand we have left with like two other colors for the for the um, baby because we could combine it with like we have some white here that would be like a little lighter nose that could be funny fun and oh this is a nice long piece too so let's just start there and and see where it goes so I'm gonna do his nose or the mom's nose first let's grab uh, two strands of this gray and then I'll save that that other strand of gray for um, the baby and actually I think we have the lighter that we do have the lighter gray in here as well and it's not very long though maybe we'll use that for the baby um, let's grab one of these whites Ugh, much easier if I bop the top first, I think. Let's, I'm trying to grab just a single strand here and it's being fussy. There we go. Zoop. There we are. So this should feel generally gray, uh, but there'll be like little streaky streaks of this white in. I think that might be kind of fun. So I'm going to just satin stitch with all these together. Um, lately, when we've been doing satin stitch, we've just been doing it with two strands. And then I like make it really nice by like splitting the strands. So uh, t I've been doing the satin stitch lately where I have all the strands like perfectly laying uh, next to each other, like single strands. Perfect. We are not doing that today because that's harder to do with three strands. I, and I do kind of want this actually more mixed. I might even like just add a little twist in here 
Um, so we have like the white twisted in a little bit more. I think this might work. I don't think I've ever done this before, like kind of twisting it beforehand. So, um, oh, and our strands are not exactly the same length. I'm gonna actually just start with a knot on the end. We'll start with an away knot for this. Okay, let's thread this side here, get my little needle minder out. All right, so I do that pinch method of threading my needle where uh, like I, I just have my end. Sometimes I'll cut, cut the end just so it's a little bit nicer, but I'll just pull it down into my fingers and then I can make this pinch motion. And, uh, um, oh, no, I'm messing it up. slide them down. If I do this pinch motion and then if I unpinch slowly, the moment I see any thread there, I'm going to just jab the eye of the needle right up in between my fingers and I keep on doing the pinch and the thread keeps coming through and then I'm just going to grab it and pull. So that's that's the pinch method that I like using for threading. Threading thread in real time it looks like this. I just grab grab the floss, pull it down. Give it a couple pinches to flatten it out and then unpinch and squish it on down, grab it and go. So that's, that's my go-to method for that. All right, so I'm gonna do a satin stitch. Ooh, let's, let's get a pencil out. I do um, like adding some lines in here. So I'm gonna do like a vertical or like I'm gonna go in the direction of the nose. So let's, let's just draw a line right down the center and I think I'm gonna do two more on either side. This will just help me. This will be like my guide posts. I'll actually start start there and then um, we'll work, work back. So I'm gonna actually put the needle in the front like so and I tied a knot on it. So uh, um, this is just gonna reserve some floss for us that I can weave in later. And uh, we'll go bottom to top here. So I'm going to start at the bottom, bottom of the shape, which is the, I'm going to leave the inside of the nose blank. So we're just filling in the outside and then I'll add a couple stitches for, for this line. Uh, but I do want to cover up these lines. So I'm going to go just on the outside of those lines. Let's cross over, go up, go up my test line, my, my, um, my uh, template line. And I'm going to go right over the edge here. All right, so that's our first guide post. Um, let's do our second. I'm always going to start at the bottom and go to the top. So up that line, go right over the top of the line. We'll see if I even have enough floss for, for this whole nose. It's actually kind of a big space to fill. Okay, so now I should be able to kind of fill in, fill in the gaps in between here. So I'm gonna start all the way on the edge here. Actually, you know what I'm not. I'm gonna go from my guide post outward. So back at the bottom, follow that up to the top again. I think it'll just be easy to get straighter lines starting from that point. So I'm gonna jump around. That's fine with a satin stitch. You don't have to start at one side and go over, but that's why I have the guide posts there. So we have a little bit of that white peeking through. This one I'm gonna come down. So it'll be like a gray nose with with um, some white. Maybe this is a, uh, um, <laughs> what do they call it? Uh, like an advanced aged, uh, pregnancy mom. What do they call it? There's a phrase for it now. They, they don't call it like freaking an elderly pregnancy or whatever anymore. Anyway, maybe this, this mom has a little bit of gray in her, her nose. So maybe, maybe, uh, she's a little bit, a little bit older. There we go. Zooming up to the top. So now I'm just kind of filling in the gaps here. And the goal is to have like these as parallel to each other as I can get them. 
and that's why I have the little gold posts. Not gold posts. Um, I don't know, little spacers. fit one more in here so it's not going to be as like perfect and like everything in line um as my satin stitches are usually again because i'm using three strands and i think we are going to need more floss for this so i might have to get a little i might have to get more of that dark gray out oh well go in between these guide posts Yeah, I'm going to need, like, a few more stitches. Oh, such a bummer. Maybe I can eke some out with that. Um. Oh, I am going to need more because I need to f do the bottom of his nose yet, too. So I'm going to need more no matter what. It's looking cute, though. This has been fun. I don't usually combine different colors of threads like this, so this has just been kind of a fun experiment. And that's... This is my last bit of floss, which is just so dumb. I have like maybe two more stitches here and then like two stitches to get uh, the bottom of this nose done. Mm, and I don't think I can get it out of this leftover. How much thread do I have here? Maybe I can do like one more stitch. Oh my God, should we attempt thread chicken? This is gonna be some major, major thread chicken if we can pull this off. I'm gonna try. Maybe I can get the last satin stitch in here. Oh my god. Thread chicken. Um, I still gotta get the bottom of the nose. Let's see if we can do that. Oh, can I get a stitch? Maybe I can get one of the stitches at the bottom of the nose. That'd be one stitch that I don't have to do. Let's, let's do a forward stitch. Maybe that'll work. No thread. Okay. Let's weave in this end. And see if I can squeeze out three more stitches with this, uh, our beginning piece of floss. So um, that's our, from our away knot that we did at the beginning, that little knot that we put on. And that's just to reserve the thread so I can weave it in now. I could have woven it into like some stitches down here that I already had, but then I'd have to jump up to the nose. I didn't want to want to see that. So let's see if this works. Oh, geez. Okay, so I'm going to snip off this end here, and let's re-thread this, and instead of weaving it in right away, I'm going to see if I can get those three stitches out of here. Do my little pinch method again, a little more difficult with this short thread. There we go. Okay, so let's get this second stitch and then we got like two stitches for the other nose Ugh, we are mega thread chickening okay a little forward stitch here i need this in like two stitches instead of one just to get like the suggestion of the curve of the nose we're totally totally one thread chicken though take that <laughs> so there we are that's looking cute a little bit of uh, white in the nose plenty of well not really but just enough thread to weave in the ends I think we did it. Awesome. So there is mom's little nose there. Cute. All right, so let's do, wondering if we should do the eyes on this guy and then do the nose, 
All right, like do do the rest of his face. Let's do that. So I'm gonna grab the black because I did like that. Maybe we do just do the black for for the eyes. We could do add brown. Should we do brown and black there? That's that's something. All right, let's do that. Um, and this black is really kind of short. I might just save that for a different uh, different one of these embroideries when it comes up. So let's get this is a really long piece which is fine. Um, let's get a piece of black that's that long. Black we'll for sure use again, so I don't mind getting a long piece of that. I'm just gonna match these up because why not? So he's gonna have black and brown eyes. Black, black brown eyes, not and brown. Combo. black. So let's get, maybe he's more brown eyes. So let's do two, two strands of the brown and one of the black. So yeah, I'm just going to take the one strand out and we'll set that aside. There we go. And then we'll take one strand out of the black. Thanks everyone for hanging out again with me here. We are doing our live special again, where if you order $20 or more from penguinandfish.com, I will throw in a free mystery gift for you. And you don't need a code or anything like that. I will just check the timestamp of the order when I'm done here. And I'll put one in for ya. All right, these are gonna be cute. So uh, let's see. Let's do that thing where I just dangle and end out that I weave in later. I like that idea. So for let's trim this so it's closer in the same length. This is that like, it's kind of like the way knot, but lazier. So uh, um, I'm gonna actually start from the front and I'm gonna pretend that I'm leaving space for the last stitch. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that with this little bit extra. So I'm gonna just let that extra hang out here. It's enough to make one stitch and uh, um, weave in the end. I think I might jump around after that, but oops, we got a mess here. Sometimes when I, I feel like, um, in this one where I've been combining threads, it's not as happy with me. Like it's wanting not up here. There we go. All right. So I like doing circles like this. Oh my gosh, see, did it again. I should get the thread conditioner out again. Um, I like doing these circles as hexagons. So this is like the bottom of the hexagon. Ooh, Linda, I like that idea. Linda says, how about going crazy for the letters and do three uh, uh, that don't match, like orange, purple, bl blue, purple, or something different. I, I like that. Then we can just go through, I like that a lot. It'll look like, um, it'll look actually kind of a, a lot like, like this with some of these greens that I threw in there. Um, yeah, I like that idea. That, that way I can use up whatever scraps from, from my little scrap pile versus from the bobbin. Ooh, that'll be fun. And we could keep kind of changing. I like the idea of like filling it in like this. So we could just go up and down with back stitches. And then as I run out of colors, it could just like, I start up with more colors and it just ends up being like a wild color deal. I like, I like that a lot. Let's do that. All right, so this is actually my last stitch here uh, because the, um, this is gonna um, be the um, last stitch plus weave in the end. So I think I'm gonna jump down to the mouth, but instead of like jumping at a diagonal, I think I'm gonna go to the nose just cause I think that'll be a, like a little less jarring. I mean, I could start fresh again, but I think I'm getting lazy tonight. Um, now I'm gonna do 
jump down and do the mouth, and then I'll jump back up through the nose instead of like one big long stitch. I think it's a little bit more subtle, these small jumps. So the mouth, I'm just making the same color as the eyes. Again, it's just brown and black. I think I might just jump over to the um, baby koala and, and do his mouth and eyes with the same color right away since I got a whole pile of this. Whole pile of this um, long strand of brown and black. Alright, so I'm going to just kind of jump back up. And we'll get, oops, we'll get the other eye. All right, so doing my little hexagon again. All right. So let's see, today's Thursday or Wednesday I'm thinking we'll probably for sure be done with this on or tomorrow so uh, I think we can get it prepped for quilting right away or maybe we'll be able to prep for quilting tomorrow yet and then maybe I can get the quilting stuff out we still have the giraffe to quilt so we could we could theoretically quilt this and the giraffe right away. Or we could wait till we have the, the um, oh, the, the giraffe we were going to hand stitch. So why don't I wait to quilt this, um, I'm going to weave in the end, uh, till I have the lion done and we can machine quilt both of those. But, but if we have extra time this week, which I'm sure we will. So instead of, um, I'll prep this for quilting, but we won't do it this week. So that with the extra time this week, Maybe we can start hand quilting the um, giraffe because we wanted to do at least one that was hand quilted. This guy's bothering me. Boop. Okay. There we are. So I'm going to do the. Um, the last stitch here and actually I'm going to be super lazy now. I'm not even going to thread um take the needle out there i'm just gonna grab a new needle <laughs> and uh because this one's all ready to go for the the baby koala i don't want to i don't want to thread it again even though i have to thread this guy still but all right so let's do that last stitch boop and now we can weave in that in i wasn't planning on doing the combo colors like the, the several different color threads for, for these eyes, but I'm glad I did. I think this brown and black are pretty together. So basically every bit of this, we're gonna do the combo of, of colors. Just trying to weave it in like three times, just wanna grab a little bit more thread. Yeah, good enough. Okay. Snip, you are done. Looking cute. So um, if I hold it up to the light, you can definitely see where uh, I jumped across, which I don't always like, but they're pretty little. And if I, if you're not looking with it backlit, uh, like this is going to be in a quilt. So um, it's going to have a, have white back here. Now, now you can barely, barely see like the jumps at all. So I'm not worried about that. I mean, if I look really close, I can see, but no one's going to notice that. Oh, Amy says, I came in late. What colors was for the eye? I am doing two strands of brown. It's the walnut brown and one strand of black. So it's just uh, mostly brown, but a tish of black. It just looks dark in general. Um, but if you look up close, then you can see. All right, so here, let's see. I'm going to just do the... I'm going to do this first just because I have it threaded, but I'm just trying to figure out how to jump across. Eh, I think we'll just jump, I guess. Um, I'm going to be covering it up the nose area. We'll just, we'll just jump around. Like I said, I don't think 
you're going to be able to see it very well. And this isn't that big of a leap to the eye compared to this guy, so we're just going to weave into the side um, and then just jump to the eye. Oh, thanks, Amy. Amy says, looks great. All right, there we are, all secured. Hi, Jada, we are embroidering uh, tonight. So doing some hand embroidery on this little koala. This is part of our ABC collection. We're actually um, sewing it into a quilt. Um, we'll auction off the quilt when it's done and the proceeds from that auction. Uh, we're gonna donate to the Minneapolis Crisis uh, nursery here. So we're making it as cute as we can. We're basically, um, this is from a collection of uh, embroidery patterns that I did way back in the day. This is like the start of Penguin and Fish was basically these um, these patterns, the alphabet. And um, we've never, I've been doing lives for over six years or so, like every, just about every evening here. And uh, um, we've never stitched the alphabet here, which just seems so weird. So we're finally, we're finally stitching up our whole, um, a whole alphabet. It's gonna take a, a year and um, some months. <laughs> we're doing two a month. I'm just gonna jump down to this mouth. We're gonna do the mouth in just like two little stitches. And I did three for the eyes, so they're a little bit more arced. For the mouth, I'm just gonna do two little bits. It'll be like a cute little V. Oh, I don't really have anywhere to weave it in though. Oh well, we'll do our best down at the bottom here. Okay, and then I'm gonna go up and we'll do do his nose. So we gotta pick colors for his nose then. And I'm just gonna kinda whip around his mouth area to weave in the stitches. Oh, Kathy says, I was late. How did I do the nose? So I did the nose um, f with satin stitch and uh, I used two of like my dark gray color, which is the um, thunder. Two, yeah, and then one strand. So two strands of thunder and one strand of white. So we did do it with three strands. I don't always do that for satin stitch now, but this one I did just because we had all those colors. All right, so this is a lot left over that we are done with for now. Okay, so the back is still looking pretty nice. All right, so let's do his little nose. Um, so yeah, again, we did the we did white and gray for mom's nose. Um, maybe we do something else. I do have that gray still, so let's grab that. We could do, we could add some of this purple back into it. That'd be kind of cute. Just see what I got in, in here yet. Ooh, maybe dark purple. The dark purple's in the mom. How many strands? Let's just pull one for now. Maybe we do two strands of this purple and one of the gray. That could be kind of cute. We'll be kind of calling out his nose a little bit, but I think that's fine. This gray is actually pretty close in value to this purple, so it'll be um, more subtle than, than the white in the nose. Because mom got some white in the nose after dealing with, with this kid on her back all the time. <laughs> the kid can be nice and bright and purple yet a little gray all right so i got two of the purple the wood violet purple and uh, um, one of the um thunder that gray Ooh, and they're just about 
Jeez, freaking exactly the right length. Did I cut him like that, or did it happen to be like that? I don't think I cut him. Magic! All right. Um, let's just weave into one of those eyes, and I will jump over. Um, I don't think I need to draw. So with the other one, I drew the, like, a guideline in. Um, but this is so small that I think I can just, I'll just stitch, stitch a guideline in. Actually, no, I think I'm going to just weave in here and jump all the way over. This is maybe getting a little bulky. I should have woven in somewhere else, but oh well. Okay. Let's just hop on over. So I'm going to put one in the center. That'll be like my guide post. A little bit more jumping around on his face than I typically like, but we're fine. So zoop, all the way to the top. Oh, this is gonna look cute. So it'll it's pretty close to his um, his outline, but just slightly deeper color. So his outline was the two strands of the light purple and one strand of this like light blue. And now we got two strands of the dark purple, so just slightly darker, and uh, uh, one strand of the gray, which is a little, like a teeny bit darker than, than the, um, the light blue of the outline. So I think this complements it. So I'm going bottom to top in the direction of the nose again, I kinda. That looks good. I have one sand stitch here, and I think I might get the. This one looks like it only needs like one little stitch to connect connect the nose. So just getting that bottom of the nose here. There we are. Cute. It's nice and poofy too. Oh gosh, that only took one stitch. So let's let's get the last one here just to kind of round it out. There we go. And our bottom of the nose, that one extra stitch. Well, that was quick. There we go. That's his cute little nose. I think that fits. <laughs> He's got a big old cute nose. All right, let's weave that in. Yeah, and let's get started on uh, the letters. So I like that idea, um, Linda's idea of um, doing all sorts of random colors um, kind of stitched in the same way as uh, the stem. So the stem, we did a back stitch first and then just kind of kept filling it in with, with a back stitch. So I think I'm going to do the same thing, just kind of like go up and down and up and down. Um, you know, and this way and then this way, and we'll just kind of choose whatever colors I got going on in my little, little poof versus using, um, the ones in my, on my, uh, bobbins here. So let's, um, I mean, I have these three on, but I kind of want to do three different colors. So let's just pull one color from here that we'll use later. That's kind of a short amount, but that's okay. We're gonna make a huge mess doing this. Um, and let's do like a super contrasty one. Let's do this um, kind of, oop, nope, that's too short. I'm trying to get a piece sort of a, sort of this length. Is this one as short? Yeah, that one's pretty short yet too. Okay, you guys are putting aside. Gosh, these are all pretty short. That means we've been like using these all up. So, all right, here's here's a yellow. This one, this one looks um, longer. Let's Let's throw a yellow in here. And there's actually kind of a lot of this yellow. Maybe yellow is like carries through. So we just keep combining this yellow with like a bunch of other colors that could work. I do need to get these generally the same length. So we're losing a teeny bit of yellow. Maybe a teeny bit of purple. Okay, let's just thread this side. 
All right, so I'm just going to do back stitch and uh, maybe I'll do that back stitch that's actually like a forward stitch and then a back stitch and then a forward stitch and a back stitch because then I'll be using a little less floss. And I'm going to do that thing where I like let a little piece dangle out again too. Oh wait, then I got to start from the front. Um, and this will be like our last stitch that I can weave in. So I'm just going to let that dangle. All right, let's just do the back stitch up this K. And we'll just be, okay, so I'll do a back stitch and then a forward stitch. Just uses a little less floss doing it this way. Um, I don't always like doing back stitches this way just because it takes more brain power. <laughs> uh, and it sometimes it's a little hard, I think, to, um, come up in the right spot, but I think for this we'll be fine. Okay, I already think this is going to be fun. All right, so now I'm going to come down this side, but I'll try and do it brick-like. So this is actually called, I think, a brick stitch when you do a bunch of um, back stitches next to each other to fill a space, but it's when you're actually doing it offset like how bricks are. So there, I did I did one, that, that first stitch is a little shorter. And then these these stitches will be my normal length. So they'll kind of be offset like, like bricks when I'm done here, theoretically. And then I'll just kind of keep offsetting them. I don't think it has to be like super perfect, but you know, we're just going straight up and down here. So it's easy enough to do. Ugh, all these colors are already looking really, really fun. All right, and then our last little half stitch. All right, I think we get another row out of here. That's nice. Yeah, so when I run out of color, I'm just going to do more and this will be like a whole like tie-dye situation almost. I think it's already looking really fun. So it's going to take a while to fill this in so eh, we might be here the whole time on, uh, tomorrow doing this too but we'll see. I feel like I need to do this for another piece sometime because I haven't done this before. Just like all these blended colors in a fill. I think it's just fun. And I like that this will almost be directional too. Like it'll it'll look like this part's going up and down. And then when we do the side, like these guys, they'll they'll feel like they're going the direction of the the letter. Unless we keep vertical this whole time. But I like the idea of it changing. stitches here. It's definitely been fun playing with color and techniques um, for this alphabet so far versus doing it just how all the original ones were. Extra play and pizzazz.
kind of like the idea of carrying out, because I do have that piece of yellow with lots of um, strands left. Dang, I, I didn't think I'd get a whole other row here. Um, I kind of like maybe trying to carry that a little bit throughout these Ks until I run out. So then that would be like the one thing kind of keeping it a little bit together color wise and then the other colors can be all over the place maybe still. It's so textury though, I like it. Dang, I got way more out of this floss than I was expecting. I think I can get like two more rows in here. This is going to be our last stitch of this color. All right, there we go. Let's weave that in. Ooh, it's pretty in the back. One, two, three. And we'll get that, oops, we'll get that um, front side, front piece that we got to weave in. But now we can just weave in the backs of these stitches. All right, getting that first stitch. That's all we're doing there. And weaving that in. Okay. Crazy and kind of fun. That'd be fun if we had like metallic in there too. That'd be kind of neat. Do like a whole blend like this with metallic. All right, let's get another piece of this yellow. Oops. There we go. And what other long pieces do we have in here? So maybe this blue is popping out at me. Ooh, that's nice and long. Very long, actually. Okay, let's grab one of those. Maybe one of these oranges or pinks. Okay, yeah, let's get, ooh, we got green too. Can we get one of these, this green piece? Let's just get these all the same length and we'll just start where we left off. These colors look too nice together almost. Okay, our yellow is the shortest here, so let's. Oh, 
Right, I'm going to weave in the end and start up right on top there, just about. Ooh, these three colors look really good together. I feel like I should do a whole design with just these three colors. <laughs> Starting yeah. So we have this, just the end of this row, and then like one more row all the way down, and then we'll um, I'll start in the other direction for the this part of the K. does actually look like it blends in a little bit, which is kind of cool. Alright, last little row to the bottom. I feel like I'm making this a little thick, but I want to cover up all the all the lines. Oh wait, and I was going forward and backwards. Forgot about that. Well, that's the start. Looking kind of crazy and fun. <laughs> I like it. Alright, let's um, now just kind of I'll backstitch up this edge. do the same thing, kind of just fill in the space. Oh, I should have maybe started on the top because if I run out of this color we'll have a little bit of up there and then some down here. Well that's kind of fun. We'll go with it. definitely relaxing just filling in this space So thanks again everyone for hanging out with me here tonight. I'll be on for like another 10 minutes or so, maybe till I run out of this thread. And then we'll call it and I'll finish this up tomorrow and get it hopefully prepped to quilt as well. That would be great. Then Friday we could start hand quilting the um, 
giraffe. So I think we're basically doing what's called a brick stitch, which is just back stitches next to each other that are offset. I'm being a little bit more organized with it um, on the letter compared to when I did it on here. I just kind of went every which way. It actually looks about the same, I think. I think I'm getting a little wider here compared to up here. I have less of space to fill at the bottom. That's not right. Try and spread it out on the top and tighten it up at the bottom. Suck it in there. I think I'm actually going to just start the next row. Not do that last little half stitch. All right, I think I just have to go up and then down, and and uh, we're done with this upper part. One more coming down to cover up the outline, and um, I think we'll be about done with our floss by then too. So that worked out perfect. So that bottom um, letter, part of the letter, bottom leg of the letter here will be a whole new color almost, I think. Unless we have a, I mean, we do kind of a little left, so maybe I'll do um, as much as I can down there with this one, because, you know, it's kind of fun to blend it in with the other ones that the last this part has some of this color in too, so I think it'll work. Let's just do one big stitch here to finish it up. There we go. It's looking fun. I like it. All right, and I am going to just jump down here and do a few stitches till I run out. I think we can get at least one row in. to get a little bit more pink or orange in the next next batch of colors. We still got that yellow left though, so I'll just keep keep using the yellow plus two other random colors. So it does kind of tie it together a little bit. I think I can still get a couple more stitches out of here. So 
I'm gonna get a whole nother row. <laughs> I'm just going to do this one last stitch and we will call it on this guy and I'll leave an end. It's kind of fun to get some of that color down there. All right, and then we will pick this up tomorrow. I think we'll have no problem finishing the rest of it, but it'll be just like filling it in like this, uh, what we did last here. All right, so there's where we are today. Uh, so we did both of their faces today and uh, uh, really playing around with that letter um, letter K's, K's down there, looking super fun and textury, kind of bringing, bringing the whole idea of the stem back in into it. I like it. <laughs> it's weird and crazy. I think it's kind of fun. So all right, you guys. Okay, so thank you again for joining me here tonight. Uh, I will be back here again tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And yeah, I'll leave the uh, uh, shop open <laughs> for the mystery gift yet for about another 10 minutes or so. So uh, spend $20 in the shop at penguinandfish.com. Uh, it's over in the link. And uh, I will throw in a mystery gift for you. So have a lovely rest of your evening, everyone. I will see you tomorrow. Good night.